Eran Gator Shias is mainland Firkin Forge, Ere Rove, Iliog, Eta or Sanutron. Agus Okohore, Eran Okoit Tom with the Kilure, She Shin Ne Hitna Menachina, Kate Flienohen, a Vrishna Constaki Esulia, is a Gleek Dunbart and Kedur. May I say first of all how welcome you all are to uh, Oris and Utrona. As we have just, as I have just said, as we are <coughs> marking the centenary of a most important event in Irish history, the calling of the first women, Avril Devril and Frances Kyle, to the bar in either Britain or Ireland. And how apt it is then that uh, I will have the opportunity to, I have the opportunity now to ex and we will hear from to extend a very particular welcome uh, to Maura McNally, chair of the Council of the Bar, and again one of just two women who have held this distinguished uh, position. Tres Liam Lafushin, I was told there is in there. I made it up with Jamaat Longat. It's very bad not to talk uh, I think that looking around the room today, it is so worthy of note, and indeed welcome, I must say, uh, how matters have changed uh, since that November day, 1921, or indeed from that earlier day, a year earlier, in January 1920, when the admission of Francis Kyle and Everett Ever, whom we were celebrating to, their admission to King's End, was described by the Irish Times as a woman's invasion of the law. <laughs> I, I think this indicates to us, and uh, so long ago, that what has been achieved, and indeed what is represented by your presence here this evening, has not been won without a struggle, a determination. And may I say also an unfortunately endured humiliation on occasion, uh, that I think is something that stains the history of some legal institutions, which I'm sure they will address in reflection. Uh, today, some 38% of all barristers are women, and some 17% of senior counsel are women. I'm delighted that this is so, and that so many of that community of law are represented here this evening. I should say that Catherine McGuinness has sent her, her love, and she very much wants to share it this evening with us this evening, but, and uh, we will be in touch on that. Many of you who are here this evening are gathered, as I have said, to honour and remember those who have gone before. I think must be very conscious of the trail that has been blazed uh, for women in law. And our gathering this evening, I have just mentioned one person of such distinction, but let us note uh, our gathering includes some of the most eminent and illustrious women who have lit and sustained that flame of equality in the practice of the law, and Maruk Tronahere, I say we are privileged, Sabine and I, and the Secretary General and others, to have you all here with us this evening for this celebratory occasion. You and your predecessors, after all, have done so much to remove through your work so many of the obstacles that once stood between women and the pursuit of a career in law, and in doing so have helped to shape the society we live in today, as esteemed judges, barristers, professors, Lectures and, of course, Attorney General, groundbreaking, you have all broken new ground, paving the way for new generations of women who will follow in the pursuit of careers in the field of the law. And we will all benefit from that. So may I thank you most warmly, then, for the important role you play in creating that fair and representative legal system which must be an important foundation stone for the creation of a, people, a nation worthy of calling itself a democracy. If we are to fully achieve such a legal system, then it must be acknowledged that the opening up of legal careers at every level to all citizens within our society is essential for the achievement of a nation that is truly seeking equality. As citizens of a country that aspires to be in such and such, it is critical that we remain alert to the need for a judicial system that will safeguard the civil rights and freedoms of all our people. We are today a greatly diverse and multicultural society, 
and we must achieve a justice system that is genuinely inclusive, fair and ethical if those who work within it in their various capacities and be representative of such a society are to be treated equally. There can be no doubt <coughs> that progress has been made within the last hundred years in relation to gender balance within our legal system. And today we gather to celebrate that dull conquin, that progress, and all who have played their part in achieving it. It is important, however, that we do not allow our encouraging contemporary data and recent statistics to obscure the fact that there remains so much ground to cover if we are, I think, to ensure and make available a fulfilling career in law, genuinely accessible to all women within our society. Why, for example, has it been over the last 30 years that in a field where over 50% of those who commenced their studies have been female, yet so few women are represented at the most senior levels of that sector? We might ask, what are the barriers that so many talented women are still encountering as they seek to progress their career? and to offer the full wealth of their creativity and intellect to that respected and greatly influential profession that is the law. I sometimes think as well, it's for another occasion, when I return to my Machnov series, I will be actually looking at the experience of women who took part in the achievement of our independence, for example, and their treatment in the later early decades of the state. But all of this you know so well. There are many factors that may constitute an explanation, but most certainly, and I think we must all be clear in this, they do not excuse the underrepresentation of women in the legal profession. Such excluding factors include the way the world of work is structured, unconscious gender discrimination, excluding networks, perceived class distinction, and perhaps the perception that certain areas of law may be most suited to women, while others might be assumed to best remain the preserve of men. Many of you here today may perhaps have encountered and overcome such barriers, or have had to repeatedly challenge the complex social and structural rules and outdated attitudes that can make it so difficult for women in law to progress at the same rate as their male colleagues. All of this makes your achievements, then, all the more appropriate for recognition and celebration, and I do so. It should go without saying, too, of course, that the quality of our justice system affects all of our citizens, the structure of our society, and the culture in which we live. When the interpreting and enforcing of our laws, or indeed when the, in the drafting and debating of these laws and the policies which surround them takes place within a system that is not fully inclusive, we have then a system that, has, that is fundamentally flawed. I have to say, somebody who taught as a sociologist, of course, in the sociology of law, I'm always very interested in the debate about jurisprudence, be it and use, for example, of the legal system as a reforming tool, as was advocated by one of my most distinguished predecessors, or again when others speak instead <coughs> of perhaps, in fact, the judicial system as being characterised by restraint, which is a most interesting intellectual debate for another day. It would be fair, I think, to say that of all sectors, the legal profession is one where diversity of experience, background, scholarship and capacity, and capacity for compassion is most critical, enabling the legal process to reflect and comprehend the broad range of circumstances and backgrounds which affect both the behaviour and needs of our citizens. I remember most moving conversations since I became president of some judges who were retiring and describing for the circumstances and context which they took into account and what it meant to them. And I thank them for it. Our judicial system, after all, has enormous power and can determine actions that impact profoundly on the lives of others. For example, the deprivation of liberty, the removal of children from a parent, the deportation of immigrants, the appropriate resolution to a serious dispute in the workplace, the right of a citizen to remain in their home.
If, therefore, we to achieve a legal system that is not inherently unfair to large groups within our society, the composition of that system must be reflective of the population it serves. The erecting of any barriers or obstacles, or indeed failure to dismantle and remove existing ones that enable gender, disability, ethnic or class background to be a significant disadvantage for those wishing to enter or progress through our legal system does society an enormous disservice. A genuinely accessible legal system is so important for a society valuing equality. We know that many citizens trying to navigate and participate in our legal system are at their most vulnerable. Many of the people who are in coming in are at their most vulnerable and fragile. For example, some may be victims of domestic or sexual abuse, too much of which goes on. Workplace discrimination or bullying, racist attacks or attempts to, evict, to be evicted unfairly from their homes. Some are non-nationals seeking rights and a status that will allow a better future for themselves and their families. Some may have suffered great deprivation and social disadvantage throughout their lives and now live on the margins of a society in which they are without a voice or a sense of belonging. One hundred years ago, Francis Carl and Avril Deverell broke new ground by allowing society to envisage a legal system that would comprise diverse and different faces. Across that century, many women, including so many of you here today, have taken up that baton, playing their role in moving us towards a day when women working at all levels within the legal profession, or indeed any profession, will be the norm and not the exception. I thank and commend you for your profound contribution towards the creation of a better and fairer society for all our people. I mentioned jurisprudence earlier. Of one thing I'm certain, the absence of the woman's influence on it is a serious disadvantage. You are all the powerful exception here. I so wish you well. Let us today then resolve to aspire towards a time when the legal profession of barrister will be a truly diverse with a greatly expanded perspective and empathy as it reflects a society enriched by individuals, some have been born here, some who have come to us from many different backgrounds, cultures and traditions. A society in which so much is possible and can be imagined, and the law at the same time reflecting all of this. Tris Liam Liv, I so congratulate you on all you have achieved. Agus mar fakal kwe, skun kriak a kalish mitar a rom, kam kwekas liv. I thank you once again for being with us this evening on this okoit kiluruk, a celebratory occasion. And to each and every one of you, I want to thank you for you, pay tribute to you for the success in your careers, three slim live, Agus and Porta Shivaklako, and the role that you are taking on and playing as inspirational role models for the legal professions of the future. Three slim live Rishis Guim Gokra, Agus Banach, the written Thaumatology. I so wish you even greater success into the future, and being the great example that you are to all those women who are going to come and to be the interpreters of our law. Mila Buikas, thank you.